It was clear to me that if these waves could be detected, it would revolutionize our understanding of the universe. I was pretty sure that the first thing we would see would be precisely what we did see. Two massive black holes spiraled together, collide. And that collision created a storm in the fabric of space and time. That brief storm produces 50 times more power output on, than all the stars in the universe put together, but that power is all coming off in these gravitational waves. We now are, have an ability to verify Einstein's relativity theory under circumstances that are so much more extreme than anything that we've ever seen before. It's the ultimate test of Einstein. Say, 20 years from now. In that era, I think what we will be using these gravitational waves for most excitingly, most interestingly, is to explore in great detail the first one second of the life of the universe. Gravitational waves are so hard to detect, but they also have a very remarkable property. They go through everything. They don't get stopped by anything. They don't get scattered. Well, electromagnetic waves get scattered, and you don't ever see really the whole thing exactly the way it is. You certainly can't look into something. The observations we were making were made with two detectors only. And all you could tell is that where's the source? It's somewhere in the southern sky. And the way you can determine where it's coming from is by timing. When does the radiation get to a specific detector? So whatever signal went, it went with close to the velocity of light from Louisiana up to Hanford. So we saw the same signal in both detectors. And that was very important to the identification and also us believing it. We know how sensitive our apparatus is. So consequently, we can say, where are they? How far away are they? And they turn out to be something like one point two or 1.3 billion light years away. So it's a very long time ago. In the future, we can now know already from our discovery that we can use black holes as a way of measuring the universe. I'm speaking on behalf of my brother, uh, Ronald. He has dementia, uh, which has been recognized. He is aware of this illness, although I think even now doesn't accept it. Ron Drever is a very intuitive scientist. He sees things through his intuition that other people see only by doing a long calculation. He thought in physics differently than most other physicists do. He didn't think so much with equations. That was not the way he could describe things. But he thought in pictures and models. And then he would take leaps, big leaps in his head. That quality of his, which was this pictorial quality, made it fascinating to work with him. And he could see ways to improve Ray Weiss's invention. These ways involved how you trap light between mirrors and how if you have even more mirrors and trap light in several different stages, you can have remarkable versatility for the instrument. And so that was his big contribution to this, this project. He is aware of what is happening. It is my privilege to be able to say he is cheerful and knows about the events and he remains as remarkable as ever. <laughs>